Welcome back to Player Display. Yep, you know what this camera angle means for this channel. <laughs> it usually means we have something really big and awesome to have a look at. And it was my birthday recently, and I got this really seriously awesome gift from my aunt. So thank you very much to my aunt for the DC Multiverse Batman Family Pack that was an Amazon exclusive. So basically, if you don't know what this pack is, it contains five members of the Batman family. And it's a pack that not everyone needs, but it works perfectly for me because I do not own all the members of the bat family so this is pretty much a one size fits all like if you don't have a bat bat girl if you're lacking a batman for whatever reason if you're missing some of the robins then this is a very good route to go with you get the pack you get all five of them well most of them rather and you're good to go but anyways here we are with the base box and it's pretty boring at the front honestly uh, it doesn't tell you a whole lot uh firstly it is gold label so that is appreciated then you got the dc multi Multiverse. The DC Multiverse label splattered on the front, along with Batman Family down there. Let's have a look at the sides. I doubt there's anything that special. Eh, Batman Family over here. Not even that. The really cool part, though, is on the back where you have this seriously awesome portrait of each and every Batman Family member. At least contained within this pack, of course, there are more of them. This pack contains Batman, Robin, uh, as portrayed by, in this case, Damian Wayne. Then we have Barbara Gordon. Gordon being Bat Batgirl, then we have Nightwing or Dick Grayson, and then we have Red Hood, of course, who was once a Robin, uh, this time being Jason Todd. Todd! So anyways, we're just going to do a full-on unboxing, because this is a very special box, and likely one we're never going to see again, so we got, of course, say it with me now, Betsy over here, and we're just going to do the usual opening procedure. Um, I have very little knowledge about this pack. Um, I think everybody in here is reuse, although they are recolored and they have different head sculpts to make them a little bit more unique, which I am totally fine with. Uh, most of these figures come from the three Jokers lineup, I believe. Um, and I have none of those figures. Well, no, that's a lie. I do have the back roll, um, and a more gray deco, but more on that later. But anyhow, it looks like you make that incision. Flop, flop, open the side. Open the slider and open. And here is everybody in the big old plastic bubble. Looking absolutely amazing. Let's get Batman in over there. So, yeah, you already got Batman, Batgirl, uh, Red Hood, got Robin, and Nightwing. Looking fantastic. So, we have a whole bunch of accessories along the top. It looks like in the back we have each of their individual trading cards. And, yeah, this just looks like a ton of fun. Uh, not sure if we're going to go into articulation um, a whole ton with these figures. Uh, maybe, like, on a few little talking points here and there if I notice any issues or anything. But, ultimately, I think all of them are re-release. So, that being said, there's just not a whole lot more to discuss aside from uh, colors, the different from the original releases and stuff like that so that's going to be the main focus of this review also there's five of them so this is basically a full wave of figures and yeah let's just see what we have i'm going to take the time to pop everybody open and we will have a look stay tuned Whew. all right so roughly six thousand of these plastic tabs later yes six thousand i counted we have all the figures and their accessories out of the box and wow this is a really great set again it's not a set that everybody needs i mean there might be some stragglers out there that you might already have or you have a more preferred version like for example i already have this batgirl in a different uh color scheme but I really do love the consistency of this pack. One thing I really wanted to mention is it captures a very specific moment in time when all these characters can indeed be together. Because as you might know from the lore, Jason Todd was a little MIA for a while because he had a little bit of beef with the Joker. As for Barbara Gordon over here, um, she also had an issue with the Joker when during the Killing Joke event, where she later became Oracle. And then also Damian Wayne, it took a little bit of time for him to be revealed. So this is a really interesting pack in that they very specifically selected these figures based on how they would look in a certain moment in time when they could all be together as the Bat Family. So I think that is really neat. It keeps things very consistent. And a very good way to exemplify that is through all the trading cards, which I believe are the same cards as were presented with the stock figures, if I'm not mistaken. I could be totally wrong, so don't quote me on that, but that means 
they are in different color schemes than they are on these base figures that we have over here. So like uh, best exemplified over here with Batgirl, here she is in her black and yellow, where over here she's in her gray, blue, and yellow. So the trading cards do not exactly match the the figures that we have over here, which honestly I don't mind. Like, here's another example. You've got Nightwing over here looking as cheerful as ever, but when you look at the figure, he's a little bit more angry. So that's a little bit of a difference that's worth mentioning. Jason Todd over here looking really great as Red Hood. And then we got Damian Wayne's Robin once again in a totally different color palette. Well, I guess it's not totally off. I guess the green throws me off a little bit and then you got the lighting, but um, no, I guess the color palette over there is not too bad. So yeah, and then all of them come with their own unique bios. I guess I can just go back in time a little bit. And then if the camera will focus here, we'll zoom in a little bit. Here we got Damian Wayne, Jason Todd, Richard Dick Grayson over there, Barbara Gordon, and, of course, Bruce Wayne, the uh, patriarch of the Bat family, of course. Anyhow, panning on out, uh, before we go and review each of these figures individually, albeit a little bit quickly, um, I did want to talk a little bit about height differences. Um, it looks like Batman is the tallest, as he should be. I really love how he's an older, more jaded version of Batman. He's a little bulkier, he's got a wider frame and everything, so that makes him stack up a little bit more against the rest of these characters, as he should. He is the oldest of the bunch. Then we have Jason Todd and Dick Grayson over here, and they're about the same height, which is pretty reasonable. Then over here we have Damian Wayne, who is a shorter one, because he is a kid at this point in time. And then we have Barbara Gordon, who is just a hair shorter than the other Robins and the Batman that we have over here. Um, I do wish she was a tad shorter than she is, though. I did hear of a little bit of a mod where you can cut out a little bit of the ankle sculpt, and then use a Dremel to make the hole go a little bit higher, and then you can pin the feet back in, and then that will allow her to be a little bit shorter than the rest of the Bat family. So that's something I'm considering, but uh, we'll review it. Maybe my thoughts will change on that. I'll have to give that a little bit of a think. But all that being said, all five of them, really excited to look at each of them individually. So let's get started. We're going to be here for a little while. So here we are with Bruce Wayne as Batman to start things off. This is a very beautiful figure. This is the three Jokers Batman who I've never owned before. We've seen him on two other occasions being black and gray and then on the Justice League of America um, build a plastic man pack. He was done totally in black. But in this case, we have him done in more of a Nightfall treatment, where he's got the blue, and then he got the gray, and also some really beautiful gold accents to boot, which I really love. Um, this is a really awesome figure, so let's get right into him. Um, up here at the cowl, we have a little bit more of an, a stoic, maybe perhaps angry expression. He has definitely has this look on his face like, I don't feel like doing anything anymore. The rest of you do the work for me. He feels less like a Batman that would be doing all the action, more so a Batman that would be barking orders at the rest of the Bat family members telling them what to do. I think one thing that I could wish for with this head sculpt is if he maybe had a little bit of stubble or something to give him some more age. I mean, this is after the Nightfall incident and a whole bunch of other comic book um, events that occurred. So this would be the figure, to me, that would embody everything that Batman has gone through over the course of his comic book history. But anyhow, going on down, we have a lot of other beautiful details to look at. We have a very Burton-esque logo down here, done in the black and gold. Um, now that I'm looking at it, the paint is ever so slightly off. You can see the gold kind of spills onto the black over here. Or rather, the black is misprinted, but that's nothing I can't fix. That's really not a huge deal. Also got a black rim, which is very appreciated. I noticed that was missed on the six-pack Michael Keaton, so I had to draw that in on my own. So it's nice that we, nice that we get that over here. And that is raised. It is a separate sculpt that was plugged into the rest of the torso over here. Speaking of torso, the body glove is predominantly done in a dark gray, looking very nice. Down here, you also have a golden utility belt, which looks fantastic. And interestingly, he also has a gray McFarlane diaper. It's not colored blue like the rest of the cape and cowl, uh, which I think would have been a little nicer, but maybe I'll repaint that. I'm definitely looking at all these figures, and I think for all of them, I'm considering at least one mod to do. So um, if you ever like mod up the Bat family, then I'll do a video on that. 
Speaking of mods, I did also want to talk about the cape, which is very beautifully sculpted. As you know from this channel, I prefer soft goods more than anything, so I may have replaced it one day, but then again, as I said, he is more of a stoic Batman who likes ordering other Bat family members around, so maybe it's okay that he's just standing still with his arms crossed or hands behind his back. I also really love that it's not swooshing off in one direction to um, isolate what poses he can be in. It's in a nice vanilla um, pose over here, so that way you can pose up the rest of the figure however you want. I also really want to draw attention to the gauntlets over here. Well, he's got these really long arm fins, which I really love. Definitely harkens back to a lot of the Nightfall imagery that we've seen in the past. Uh, very long, looks like that. Contrary to other Batman designs, these could actually hurt you, so <laughs> I really love that. You also have a little bit of rib design here on the gloves with some knuckle dusters as well, looking very well sculpted. Down to the legs, more just gray. There's no um, nothing hanging off to his thighs or anything like that. So just standard pants. Get down to the boots, and boots are boots. I say it again. So, really beautiful figure overall, and that being said, let's talk about our accessories. Firstly, this plays with all the rest of the figures as well, but we got the DC Multiverse Stand. Before we won't talk about it again, but over here we have his only accessory, unfortunately, which is his grappling hook, which looks great, really well sculpted. I do think it could use a little bit of silver wash or something like that. Um, you don't get a whole lot of washes with the McFarlane figures. But regardless, it's great sculpt. I really like it a lot. Um, one thing I I could definitely see myself doing is replacing this little wiring here with some actual bendy wire and I could attach it to the hook which perhaps should be done in silver but regardless very good looking accessory um I believe all these figures come with the exact same accessories that they came with when they were initially released except for Red Hood we will talk about him soon but Anyhow, as for getting the accessory into his hand, um, let's see how that's like. The hand is a little stiff. These figures do show their age in a few aspects, and this is one of them. Uh, this hand is really tight, so let's see if we can sort of uh, put it in a short way to the palm and then turn it, and then, okay, that's not so bad. And then there you go. You got Batman with his grapnel hook, grappling hook, whatever it is you want to call it, and he's looking pretty damn sweet. Again, I think we're going to skip articulation. I've already gone through all the figures to see how they move. And as for this Batman here, I have no real issues. Everything seems to move fine. Um, he's got some butterfly joints in there. I mean, he's got the usual McFarlane wrists and everything. The McFarlane diaper gives him some good range as well. And then you got also some rocker. So, <laughs> of course, he can't talk about articulation without discussing rocker so yeah all, all around um it's a figure where you kind of know what to expect especially if you've already had this particular three jokers batman before or the justice league of america version but overall really good blend between an aged batman Nightfall Batman, just a nice legacy Batman for your shelf. Now here we are with Barbara Gordon, not as Batperson or Batwoman, but as Batgirl. And she is also a reuse from the Three Jokers line, and also repainted, very similarly to um, the Batman that we just saw. Both of them were kind of done in a black and gray initially, but now, once again, we have the blue and gray and gold motif, which is pretty well done. I think better executed on the Batman. Um, as you can see here, we have a whole bunch of of these golden accents going throughout the figure on the cape, on the logo, on the belt, and on the gloves, and on the boots as well. But it's not quite as shiny as we saw on the Batman over here. Like over here, you could see that there is definitely a sheen to the belt and the logo. But over here, it's more of a molded gold, if you know what I mean. There's like some marbling in there if you stare closely enough. Uh, it doesn't really have that extra little kick that I think it could use. But regardless, it's still a really great looking motif throughout this figure. I think it really does help her shine a little bit above their original three jokers back girl that we've seen anyhow let's move on from the gold part and talk about the head sculpt over here really beautiful head sculpt although with a few nitpicks in here um firstly it's very beautifully done you got the eyes you got a really nice looking cowl i really love the shape that's done uh, you also have some beautifully applied lips with the red you also got the hair pouring out of the back of the cowl so overall really great head sculpt 
Although there are a few little minor t tweaks here that I might need to assess to myself. First thing over here is we've got um, a little bit of paint bleed from the face onto the lip of the cowl, which we've seen before with any bat related character, so that's kind of to be expected, and honestly, from a distance, it's not the most visible thing ever. Well, all right. It's a little bit visible, but not the worst thing. Um, also, we do have, if you can see, there is, ah, there we are, hit the sweet spot. There's this little touch of glue residue on the very top of the head, so I'm going to see if I can rub that off at some point, but for most lights, it's not the most um, intrusive thing, so I, I, that really doesn't bug me too much. The last thing we're th talking about is something that does carry on from the Three Jokers release, which is the eyes. And they're beautifully done, except they're looking forever to the side. I do wish they were looking straight on like the rest of the figures in this wave. Um, I, well, that being said, now that I'm looking at it, the rest of the figures have widened out eyes, so there's no pupils to speak of at all. She's the only figure in this whole five-pack that has discernible pupils. So... All that being said, they're beautifully done, well printed in. You have the little highlights and everything, and just a little tint of blue in there. But I wish they were looking straight on. Um, when they look to the side, similarly to how a cape would be sculpted, we'll talk about the cape later on as well, um, it kind of restricts what you're able to do with this figure. You can't have her... Uh, kind of attacking towards the right at all because she's looking to the left in perpetuum. So I wish they would have changed that if they were going to reuse this figure. That being said, other details, you have a shorter cape compared to the rest of the characters here, or shorter to Batman. Most of them do not have a cape. Well, two of them don't have a cape. But in this case, you have the same cape as we saw with the three Jokers Batgirl. Again, it's totally the same sculpt. And I really do love the color choices that they used here. You've got um, more of a yellow as opposed to a gold. Um, then you got the same blue on top. This is the case where I would love a soft goods cape. Um, then you could have a little bit more of that shimmeriness going on or something like that. Um, this is a figure that I'm, think, I'm, that I'm thinking of considering modding the most out of this wave, but that being said, it's still a great figure, so don't get me wrong there. Going on down, you got some gold gloves, as we discussed before. Um, really love how he squeezed in the Bat logo here on the utility belt as well. Going on down, you got some boots, again, with a little bit of a Bat logo hidden just at the top, which I think is really neat. And no high heels down here for this particular Batgirl, and yeah, all that being said, really good figure. As for accessory, she comes with one more than Batman does. She has another grappling hook, um, a little similar to the same style as one we saw with Batman. Once more, I think it could use a silver wash. I think that would just bring things out a little bit more. So let's get that into one of her hands. Um, both of them are trigger hands, but are meant for, of course, grappling hooks, not firearms. We get to more lethal members of the Batman family later on in this review. But we have her grappling hook. And then we also have a universal Batarang, which is good. This can go with just about any one of these figures that you prefer, so this is probably the most universal accessory that comes in this pack. You gotta click it in, just like so, in between the fingers, and yeah, looking pretty nice. I don't think she'd be holding both at once, but that being said, you can accomplish that, so that's very nice. And articulation is not an issue as well, although you do, once again, have your rocker. So don't want to forget about that, right? Let's move on to our three Robins, but in this case, of course, we have Dick Grayson, who is no longer Robin, but instead Nightwing. Um, this is a reuse from the new 52 Nightwing. Um, I forget when he was released, what wave he was part of, but I don't care. I have a Nightwing now. Uh, that makes me really happy. I do have a custom uh, new 52 Nightwing that instead has the red accent, so it's nice that finally I have one with the blue. Um, the first thing that's the elephant in the room here is the brand new head sculpt, which I I imagine is a love it or hate it thing depending on what you want this Nightwing to bing to bing what depending on what you want this Nightwing to be um in this case he is a lot more angry he's got kind of this gur going on he looks very snarly and angry but then again we look at the trading card he looks very ch very old very good old chipper and go lucky and whatever but in this case he definitely has a lot more much more of an attitude so standing here like that just with that angry look on his face doesn't quite work this is a figure that calls for him to be dynamic no matter what you do with him he definitely needs to be moving around definitely needs to have his um two batons that we'll get to in the air um this is a figure that is meant to be doing a lot more of the action but that being said it's still a good head sculpt um with all that out the door really good looking hairdo over here with some blue watch which i really do appreciate 
Very excellent domino mask. A little more on the thin side, done in a very bright blue, as we see throughout this suit. And then we also got the teeth, which are also pretty well done. If you zoom in here, they are differently sculpted and printed in. I guess when you zoom in that closely, it does come off as a little bit weird. Um, you actually can see the printing in the eyes as well as on the teeth. So that's pretty interesting to see. Down here on the rest of the body, it's a pretty minimalistic suit across all his appearances, but you do have the Nightwing logo, which branches off onto the shoulders, similarly to what we saw in the Batman and Robin wave Robin, so that's where he got his influence from. Down to the rest of the arms, it is just done in black, and that is it. Same down here, down to the diapers, and then, uh, down here on the boots, they are also done in black, although you have these blue ribbons going on. And... On the back, you have these clips for his two batons, and that's literally it for the aesthetics of this figure. It's the most simple of all the figures that we have here, but it's still, sometimes simplicity wins the day, and this is a really good one. Now let's talk about accessories. Both of them are identical, and if you know anything about Nightwing, then you know exactly what they are. They are his two electric stun batons, which are well sculpted. I like them. Um, I do appreciate that I don't need to warm them up. They don't seem warped or anything, which is very good. They're made of a pretty sturdy plastic which I like, although I wish they would have done something to give them more of an electrical effect going on. So they're a little bit, you know, zippy zappy. They got some blue going up the shaft, something like that. Maybe they could have a little clip-on piece they could slide onto them to give them a little bit more of that electric crackle coming out, a little bit of Emperor Palpatine going on. But that being said, they look fantastic, and as we just saw, there are two different things that you could do with these batons when it comes to Nightwing over here. First thing you can do is, the most obvious, you could pop them into his hands, and since this is all reuse, I imagine this is no issue. You could just slide them right in to his gripping hands. And, oh, speaking of gripping hands, I forgot to mention that he has um, blue knuckle dusters, which also looks really nice. Neat little detail, but... Yeah, they look fantastic, and especially with that very exposed McFarlane joint, you can have them articulating however you want. Ooh, actually like that, getting them over his shoulders just like that. I think that looks really badass. <laughs> it's, it's really good. But also, of course, you could also take both of them, but in this case, let's do one, and you could sort it on his back. Um, these are the grips over here. I think the electrical part is meant to go towards the bottom. Um, it could really go either way. Well, if he's going to reach up and grab them, that would be something like that. You got the head here, and yeah, pretty good. <laughs> you can have them alternating, you can have them both on his back, whatever you want. But again, this is meant to be a more action-oriented Nightwing. Really dig this figure. Honestly, I don't think there's going to be a single stinker in this five-pack. I keep saying that for all of them. But in this case, also very good. Continuing the trend, love them a lot. Now let's move on to the third known Robin, the second being Tim Drake, who is for some reason absent from this pack. But in this case, you have a really awesome Robin being Jason Todd, who of course became Red Hood, who is one of my latest favorites in the Batman lineup and mythology. So, he is a standard Robin, but of course he had a little bit of a run-in with the Joker that drove him a little bit crazy, driving him to become the first homicidal member of the Bat family. He is known to wield firearms, which he does not come with because of Warner Brothers, of course, but... That being said, that makes him a very unique addition to this wave. That's why he's so aesthetically different from the rest of them. Meant to look a lot more grungy and edgy, and I really dig that. This is also reused from the three Jokers wave, and it's a really great figure and also the most modular of all the figures that we have here. So firstly, we actually have two head sculpts, so you'll look at both of them here. First one we have is Unmasked. We have a very... Um, a neutral looking expression, which I do like a lot with a black domino mask and also with very similar hair to what we saw with Dick Grayson with a blue wash with a black sculpt and it's looking very good. Although if you want the traditional red hood look, you can pop this off and you could pop on his, not really a red hood, but more of a red helmet. I mean, the red hood is over here, which he never uses, but over here we have his more iconic red helmet. Again, I can't really call it a hood. And this is actually a unique sculpt from the Three Jokers variant, because when you look really closely, um, you can see that there are etched in details for some shattered effects in this helmet. However, they also tried painting them in, but they totally missed the mark. You could see that the black is totally disjointed from those grooves, which, again, from a distance... Oh, head popped off. Let's try that again. Um, from a distance is not the most visible thing, so I honestly don't mind it too much. But let's see if we can get that back on there. Not really hearing a click, so 
Oh, no, it's on there. Okay. But... Yeah, it's a little, the paint's a little misaligned, but that being said, it's still a really good head sculpt, and you pull out a little bit, you don't even see it. I really love this head sculpt. I like how it's shattered, it kind of resembles his state of mind, he is a little bit on the crazier side compared to the rest of them, a lot more impulsive, of course homicidal, um, it just really adds to this character, so I don't mind this guy being my default Red Hood. I already have the Arkham Knight variant of him, but then I played the game and I realized how insignificant he was, <laughs> And then I got getting this figure here, and I am really happy to have him. Although there is one um, problem with this figure, and again, a place where one that, where you realize recycling older molds does result in them showing their age a little bit. We get down to the hands here, and one thing I did not know about this figure is the hands do not have the typical McFarlane joint. They are sadly restricted to just a swivel, which is a total bummer. I was really hoping I could pair him up with the weapons that we've see been seeing in the McFarlane weapon packs, but because he can't really move the wrists um, up and down and said you only have a swivel, that's going to limit your options a bit. Everything else, though, I actually love. Uh, you have this really awesome leather jacket, which is unfortunately missing a few little um, opportunities with some studs, some buttons over here. Uh, those could be painted in with some silver, I feel like. That's something I'll definitely do. But if you peel that away from the torso, you can actually see the remnants of his original Robin suit, which I think is really awesome. Then you pair that with the red helmet that we have up here, and they look especially kick-ass together. Going on down, he got a black belt, he got some cargo pants, a few little red rivets on the boots, and he's looking absolutely phenomenal. Um, aesthetically, this figure is one of my favorites, although those wrists, they do bug me a little bit. As for accessories, what does he come with since he doesn't have any firearms? Well, he has his crowbar, which is an essential to his story. Um, it does come off as a little bit weak. Um, it's done in a slate gray, a very light gray. Um, definitely needs some paint. I would love to do this up in silver or something like that. Um, this is something that he, of course, can hold, and it did come with the three Jokers Red Hood as well, so you're going to have no issue with that. But that being said, if we remove it, you do see that the hands are primed to hold firearms because there is a trigger finger in there. So even though it doesn't have the right wrists, the hands are prepared to hold whatever firearms you wish. Before we continue, I did actually want to make a quick pit stop and test out what it is like fitting in some of the McFarlane weapons into the Red Hood's hands. Because I feel like anyone who does get their hands on this figure does want him to indeed have firearms. So I don't know, let's just test a few of them out. So here we have, I'm not going to try naming weapons here, but we have a little mini SMG sort of thing. I don't know what it's called. But yeah, it looks like he can hold these weapons fine. In fact, we can have him dual wield it. Camera. Now with our messed up camera here, we're gonna go ahead and put in the other firearm here. Uh, they're not identical, but who cares? I mean, he could pick up any firearm and just go to town. I don't think it matters if they're identical or not. But yeah, you can hold those weapons fine. I mean, they still look good. Um, actually, it's nice that the hands are curved in ever so slightly, so the weapons point straight out at you. So that's really good. So that does um, substitute the lack of a proper McFarlane joint pretty all right. But the last thing I wanted to try is a double-handed weapon. This, I'm not sure how well this is going to turn out. Um, the grip on this guy is a little bit big, but does fit in there if you spin it around a little bit. Then we could take this hand, push it forward. There's not a really good place to... Oh, no, we can grip right there. And, okay, you know what? It's not so bad. It's not as bad as I thought it would be, so maybe I will keep these hands after all. But then, yeah, there we go. Focus in a little bit. And, yeah, you can hold a double-handed weapon just fine, so that is an option for you. It's definitely in the cards. So, looking really sweet. I'm definitely going to have him with firearms instead of that stupid little crowbar. One other thing that I did want to test is we do have this extra head sculpt over here being the more um, subtle one. It's not as extreme as the Nightwing that we saw. So one thing I was thinking is what if we took Nightwing into the picture again and we tried removing this head sculpt, which is not an issue. And, oh, we couldn't really do that because what I was thinking is he could take this head sculpt and drop it onto the Nightwing so you have something more subtle, but doesn't work quite as well because you see it kind of sinks down on the neck and the flesh tones don't quite match up. You can see the Nightwing is a little bit more yellow, but anyhow, what I was trying to get on with is we can take this more angry head sculpt and put that on the three Joker's red hood because he's going to be a little bit more angry and impulsive and everything. So this would be a bit more befitting to red hood than it is to Nightwing over here. So, oh well, that's a customizing opportunity you could 
potentially work with. Um, I might do that. Um, then again, I'm probably going to prefer him with this um, red helmet anyways. As for Nightwing, though, you could keep this head sculpt, which is totally fine, and I'm still thinking about it. But if I wanted to do a little bit of modding work and some repainting work, I could take this head and then figure out the joint situation and put that on him here so we have something more subtle. Like, look at that, that's not too bad, right? And then also repaint the mask and so it's blue, perhaps, but even in black, it's not so bad. So that's something to think about, but as for reporting this default head back on, I imagine, yeah, not a big deal. So yeah, there's some customizing opportunities in there. I'll think about it, but for now, I prefer my Nightwing with this head sculpt just because he's got the blue domino mask. And as for Red Hood, well, I prefer him with the red helmet that he's known for wearing. And he looks absolutely kick-ass. He's going to be wearing this for the rest of this review. Lastly, we have who I believe is the latest Robin in the lineup, being Damian Wayne, who is a child of Bruce Wayne and Talia al Ghul, which is a concept that I honestly don't like as much. Whenever I think of Batman, I always think of him as a guy who's never able to maintain a romantic relationship, but he is able to foster children. I mean, albeit in a very controversial way, being that he brings them up to be vigilantes, but... That being said, I just find it odd that Bruce Wayne has a bio child. I just find that a little bit strange. But that being said, how is this Robin as a figure? He is actually really well done. I don't know a whole ton about Damian Wayne, but he is a little bit more on the aggressive side, similarly to Jason Todd, Red Hood. But yeah, he has a very traditional, although somewhat upgraded and personalized Robin suit. You see over here, he's got the Robin logo on his chest and just a whole lot of paint detail from head to toe looking absolutely fantastic and certainly distinguishing him from the rest of the figures in this pack. Uh, this figure is reuse. Um, let me check the trading card. I'm actually not familiar with this figure at all, so I have to refresh my memory a bit. He is also from the DC Rebirth line, um, and he is a reused body. As for the head sculpt, I don't know if this is reused or not. It might be brand new. I just don't know. If I can find a photo reference, if I'm not too lazy, then I'll put it over here so you can see the original one. But that being said, it's a good-looking head sculpt that is befitting to this character. Again, more on the aggressive side. He is more likely to kill someone than to save them, but... Yeah, he looks good. I really like the wispy nature of his hair, similar to the two Robins that we just had a look at. Again, black sculpt with a little bit of a blue wash to bring in some of the sculpting detail. Really loving that a lot. We have another domino mask here, the third one that we've been seeing in this whole wave, this time done in green. You also have a very unique cape, which is, again, solid. I might want to replace this one day. I'll think about it. But it comes up to this hood, along with a little bit of this collar over here. So... I don't know, it's pretty interesting. Um, I don't love how it teeters off to the side. We kind of discussed that a little bit earlier in this review. Kind of restricts what you're able to do with him. But that being said, it's still well sculpted. It's nice. It doesn't get in the way too much, I mean. So it's not horrible. Then going down to the rest of the suit, we have um, some classic Robin Red accented with some gold and black looking absolutely beautiful. The paint is very well applied. I'm not seeing a whole lot of slot, slop or missed spots or anything like that. Uh, it's just looking really great. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention is this figure, we're getting into articulation again, uh, so if you missed it, here we are. Um, the elbows and the knees are single-jointed, which I found a little bit awkward. Um, never mind, I take that back, there are double joints in the elbows. Uh, they're just done in a very strange way. You can see there's this very thin joint in there. It's really tiny, but it does reach over to the forearm, and it does allow for a double joint. You see, we can crack open that initial joint there, but then the forearm can go in just a little bit further, so he does get past 90. But then we go down to the knees. These are definitely single-jointed. They stop right there. So I found that a little interesting. Probably not the worst thing since he is a smaller figure, but he is not the most dynamic of the bunch, certainly. So that is a minor disappointment, but again, he's not my favorite of the Robins here. Um, I guess Nightwing might be my favorite. Maybe neck to neck with Jason Todd. Uh, I have to think about that, but... A lot being said, beautiful looking figure. I mean, he's got blue gloves. Blue? Where did blue come from? I don't know. He's got green gloves. He's got, got green boots with some really nice red laces. So I really appreciate that a little attention to detail. So all around, 
pretty good looking figure. Perhaps not the most functional, but not bad. I dig him. He's pretty neat for a figure that I don't know a whole ton about, or character rather. As for accessories, for some reason, he is the most decked out of all the five, the, the five that we've been looking at today. Uh, firstly, he has this really long... I mean, now and then you do hear a little bit of plumbing in this closet, but you do have, show must go on, we do have this very long Talia al Ghul adjacent sword looking really good with this very excellently done silver going all along down the blade, along with this golden grip. You also have two shurikens, which are a lot more lethal looking than the traditional uh, batarang or wingding. Uh, these would definitely kill someone, but they also look very nice and also done in that same silver. Um, well, maybe a little more dull compared to the silver here. Yeah, a little bit more dull, but still looking very gun good nonetheless. Um, there is maybe a little bit of warping. Let me check on that. Um, let's see here. Um, no, I think they're pretty straight. They're not too bad. So looking pretty good. Anyhow, let's try out some of these different accessories in his hands. So let's take the sword and pop pop it into here. Um, shouldn't be too tough. Wow, the hands are a little bit um, stiff. I'm noticing that with most of these figures here. But yeah, you can slide it in. And then he's got the sword over here. And that definitely adds to his menace. So he, where he lacks an articulation, he's beefed out with his accessories. As for the shurikens, I'm not totally sure how these are meant to go in. Um, this is where I think the slotting in between the fingers method would be best. So if we're a little gentle, you can get it in between the index and middle, and then he's got a big old shuriken fling at his enemies right there. And that's actually kind of a cool pose for him, pointing out the sword, he's got the shuriken right there. Not sure where he stores it, it's pretty big, it must be retractable, similar to a predator. But that being said, good looking accessories, you could do quite a bit with them. Get over here, covering his face a little bit. Sword over his shoulder. And all right, so this guy, he actually has quite a bit more opposing options than I thought. He's looking really great. I dig this figure more than I thought. So very good. Here we are at size comparisons where I did expand the family by just one more member to kind of fill in that missing link between all the Robins. Of course, we had Dick Grayson, then we had Jason Todd, but we were also missing Tim Drake here as Robin, who would of course later become Red Robin, so it's only inaccurate that we have two Robins existing simultaneously, but regardless, I just felt like we needed that more adult Robin to kind of fill in the gap here, so this feels more like a cohesive family going on. And also, he's pretty level with Nightwing and Red Hood, so they look really good as a team over there. Might get Red Robin one day. Gotta think about it. Don't love figures with really big wings. It takes up a lot of space on the shelf, so I'll think about that. But anyhow, last but not least, we have our Star Wars of Black series, Mechamuck! <laughs> you think an over-glorified cherry lollipop is supposed to scare me? He should scare you! He doesn't have the no-kill rule! Um, you, you should go wait in the Prius, son. Forgive me if I don't feel like reposing these guys after we just did size comparisons, but that would be a lot of work. I'm going to wait for the thumbnail, but anyhow, let's move right into the final thoughts. I think this is an awesome pack. There's always something to nitpick. I mean, it's Todd McFarlane after all. Todd! There's always going to be something in there, but overall, I think it's really a really good case of reuse five times over. In fact, we should probably remove Jason Todd. I mean, excuse me, Tim Drake. I'm getting all my Robins confused now because he is not part part of this pack, but um, yeah, all these figures together are really awesome. Again, it's what I'd call a one-size-fits-all pack. Um, if you're missing any of the Bat Family members, this is a good way to just get all of them in one felt swoop, and they're all done with a very good base body, I feel like. They're, the choices were really good. Um, like, for example, you have the Year Zero variant of Red Hood out there, which is also very good, but I guess by this moment in time, where we have the rest of the four characters together, he wouldn't be in that particular costume, I don't know. So there could be a little bit of nitpicking going on with the chronology of what would make sense for all these various suits to be together and the different looks of these characters. But for me, they do their job fine. This is definitely my bad family. Of course, this is not a complete bat family. There never will be because there keeps being more members. Like we got Cassandra Kane's Batwoman. We have, uh, Batman Beyond, and a whole bunch of others out there. The comics are going to keep adding to the pile. Uh, so, obviously, this is not a complete 
bat family, but it's a good place to get you started, especially if you're missing any of these characters. Like for me, I was missing a proper Red Hood, didn't have a Damian Wayne, and I didn't have a decent um, Dick Grayson. So finally, we have those characters. Then I already had this particular Batgirl, but I like this color scheme a lot more. It feels a lot more 70s to me. Obviously, I have Batman in spades by now. I'm a Batman collector, though, so it's okay that I have an extra. And again, it's nice to have an older Bruce Wayne, one that's kind of barking orders at the rest of the Bat family, as I've already said before. So it's nice to have a Batman who's a little bit later on in life, in like his 50s by this point, or something like that. That being said, really great pack. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this and what you think about these figures, especially compared to their former releases, because again, all the these guys are re-releases? Do you prefer how they were originally released in the past? Or do you actually prefer them here as they appear in this very special Amazon exclusive five pack? I really do think there are strengths and weaknesses to this pack, but there's so much good that little tiny nitpicks that I have, they really just fall through the floor. They don't matter that much. Like we tested out the firearms here with Red Hood, and even though he doesn't have the traditional wrist joints that I'd want, he's still able to hold firearms pretty all right, so that's not a big deal. They also discuss that there's a little bit of height difference issue with Barbara Gordon over there, but they don't. it doesn't bug me too much, and there's a little bit of a mod that I can do. And then we also have Nightwing over here. He seems a little bit too angry for his own good, but it's not a bad head sculpt. It's very situational, but it's not bad. And also you could do a little bit of an ele electrical something going on with the two batons, because I don't think I'm going to have them have them on his back very much, because they're meant to be more dynamic, swooshing out knocking people over just like that. And yeah, that was a grappling hook. Let's go ahead and fix that and put him right back in the station as we conclude this review before I create more chaos. So all that being said, thank you guys very much for watching. For washing? What are you washing? That's my neighbors. They're washing themselves upstairs. <laughs> thank you guys very much for watching. And if you enjoyed, then please, as per usual, be sure to like, comment, ring the bell to be notified of our latest arrivals, and subscribe. Speaking, humbly reminding you to support the pod Patreon in the description to guarantee new content every single week. Thank you guys very much for watching. Rock on, and I will see you all later.